So, good day everyone. After we had tackled about the first part of this chapter, the chapter 16, Exploration and Economic Change with my colleague Genevieve D. Robles, now I am going to continue and discuss the latter part of this chapter. So, as a continuation, we will be going to tackle about the Spanish and Portuguese as they settled in the Americas. Fourth is the as the Dutch, English, and French gained colonies through this new world. And fifth, the changes bring a revolution in economic life. Before we continue our discussion, I would like to, to give the reference or share the reference where, where we get these um, resources coming from the book of Marvin Perry. So to formally continue our discussion, as you can see here in our slide, um, it is the, uh, the Christ, the Redeemer, from a famous tourist destination, a man-made tourist destination in the country of Brazil. It shows how um, this country was being influenced by Western ideology or Western mindset or the religion of Christianity, as you can see, um, the religion of Christianity. And because of this religion, we can see the influence by these Western colonizers in the New World, including Brazil and its um, neighboring Latin countries. To, as part of the chapter outline of the 3.7, the chapter 3.7, um, the Portuguese colonized Brazil slowly. Um, we can see that um, Brazil was being colonized slowly, meaning to say that Brazilians or the natives um, did not surrender easily, making the colonizers find hard to colonize this nation in the beginning. Uh, missionary efforts from the Jesuits also played an important part in the settlement of Brazil by the Portuguese. Because of this religious order, the Jesuits, and um, as you can see, um, religious orders have different um, groups, including the Recollects, um, the Jesuits, and many other coming from the uh, major Christian majority in the countries of Western world. These Jesuits um, took a lead in order to propagate the ideas and um, the belief of Christianity. In 1500s, the fleet of Pedro Cabral had made a wide arc into the Western Atlantic. So this is the route where these colonizers took in order to um, finally go to their destination, which is the New World, where, became, where it became famous because of the legends and the stories um, told by the um, first colonizers or the the primary colonizers at the beginning of the colon period of colonization. So here is Pedro Cabral. He is a famous navigator and conquistador. Most of the settlements in Brazil were founded by wealthy nobles. So we need to note that um, the settlements in Brazil were being founded by wealthy nobles to whom the Portuguese king gave large grants of land. So these nobles did not um, take this on their own. This was being given to them by the king. Unlike the colonies through settlers from all classes of society, but here um, mostly nobles took granted to these um, new lands. Portuguese settlers followed the missionaries inland. So as these missionaries, these Jesuits um, took a lead, Portuguese settlers followed and it is start, this started the, the colonization period in the Americas, especially in Brazil. Some of these people were farmers looking for good grazing land. Others were adventurers looking for gold 
or for Indians to capture and sell as slaves. So there are different um, purposes where these colonizers um, made in order for them to colonize these countries, including um, for agricultural purposes, because as we know, during this period, um, there is a uh, scarcity of land in the motherland or in the western countries or in Europe. So they need to find uh, a way on how they can increase their production. And one way is to find a wider and more fertile land, which um, these um, Latin American lands offered. So this is the map where Pedro Alvarez Cabral um, took coming from the West Indies until or East India or East Indies going to the port of Seguro. So here, three, the 3.8, the Indian population declines dramatically. So this native um, population of Brazil uh, declined because of the um, problems caused by the colonizers. Although forced labors and conquest, conquest killed uh, many Indians, particularly in the Spanish colonies, the Indians' worst enemies were the new diseases brought to the Americas from Europe, Asia, and Africa. Because of these novel diseases, um, the immune systems of these um, natives did not were not able to to survive. The Arawaks of the Caribbean islands were wiped out altogether. So this is one of the um, cause or the effect of these uh, diseases that emerge in during this colonization. In the span of a generation, smallpox, missiles, flu, and the common cold killed hundreds of thousands of natives in this newfound land. The Arawaks of the Caribbean islands were wiped out, as I had said a while ago, and in some areas of the Mexican mainland, not only in, in Brazil, but also in other Latin colonies, Latin American colonies. The population fell to about a third, note. we need to note for this, a third of what it had been before the Europeans arrived. So African slaves, another effect or impact of this colonization was um, the beginning of slave trade where African slaves coming from their African lands, they went or they are being brought to the um, Americas in order to become slaves on the farms or the lands colonized by these um, Westerners. The tragic deaths of so many Indians caused a severe labor shortage in the Spanish colonies. By the mid-1500s, the Portuguese settlers in Brazil also needed laborers for their newly established sugar plantations. So because of these sugar plantations, these um, Western nobles or these agriculturists, they need more workforce or manpower to cultivate their lands. So they needed more slaves in order to, to give this as their... Um, work or um, they need to till these lands. So one of the famous um, phrase or trade is slave trade that happened in the past is the transatlantic slave trade, which is a segment of the global slave trade that transported between 10 million and 12 million enslaved Africans across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas from the 16th to the 19th century. The Crown justified its policy with two arguments. Um, this Atlantic slave trade were being legalized because of these premises or arguments formulated by these worst Western powers, including um, Blacks, that Blacks, unlike the Indians in the Americas, were not Christians and had already been this limit of in Africa. Africans were supposed, next is the 
um, argument that Africans were supposed to be accustomed to heavy field work in a tropical climate. So this justifies the reason why they are being subjected to this kind of slave trade. Next is that blacks adapt to colonial life because they were being transported and being enslaved by these colonial powers. They adapted to the the lifestyle to the to the new lifestyle where they are now being um, located, especially in the Americas. African slaves and their descendants in the Spanish and Portuguese colonies differed from the native Indian peons in significant ways. So these Indian natives and African slaves um, were different, but they were able to to merge into or into a one single culture. So there is an assimilation of culture. The blacks had been forcefully transported from their homelands and cut off from their traditions. So they were being introduced to oh, a new culture and they don't have the power to resist this but to um to adapt so here is the photos of the um events or the happenings happen during this colonial period where slaves living in the same plantation might come from different african societies and speak very different languages so there are cultural differences with their ties to Africa cut, black people in the Americas adapted, as I had said a while ago, Christianity and European speeches. Um, they already learned different um, Western cultures, including their European languages, clothing, and customs. Another is that the American Indians, on the other hand, tended to remain isolated in their scattered villages and to cling to their centuries-old traditional ways because these native Indians really resisted on the um, um, plan of Westerners to colonize them. So what they did is to um, go farther at the mountains and to avoid the colonizing effect of Westerners. So because of this happening, there um, happened the intermarriages which became common between European and African men and Indian women in the colonies. This mixed population grew more quickly than the Indian population. So um, Latin Americas or these lands were being overpopulated by foreign people, including this mixed population. Children who survived infancy tended to be more immune to disease than their parents. So because of the intermarriages, um, their grandsons and granddaughters um, develop a more um, or a stronger immune system to resist the diseases happened in the locality. Unlike the, uh, the in, Indian natives who were being washed out, um, not totally, but um, there is a great number of people who were being washed out because of these diseases. These um, races or this mixed uh, populations were being called as the mestizos or those whose parents were European and Indian and the mulatos, the descendants of European and Black Africans. So the distinction is that uh, these two races are um, have two or more um, races being combined to them. But the differences is that mulatos coming came from Black Africans and the mestizos came from the Indians, native Indians. So these people felt at home in Latin America. They had no memory of a homeland abroad and they had not been conquered. Most spoke Spanish or Portuguese, were baptized as Christians and followed other European ways throughout Latin America and people with mixed ancestry came to make up most urban population. From their ranks would come many modern Latin American leaders. So... Uh, these mixed races populated the urban areas, as we can see in their 
in modern cities of Latin America, as many population there were considered as mixed races like um, the Latinos. And the effect is that the eradication of their native culture and the um, the this was being replaced by um, a new culture which is very westernized. One of the famous um, personality or mixed race individual is Simon Bolivar. He is remembered today as the greatest leader of South American independence who highly influenced or highly influenced by the examples of the United States, the French Revolution, and Napoleon. He led a massive revolt against Spanish colonial rule in South America beginning in 1810 because of the suppression uh, received by these mixed races coming from the more dominant or more uh, the superior Western races. They resisted because they know they have the right to to their motherland. So they fight for their rights and they really fought for their freedom. So colonization brings cultural exchange. So it is very significant that during this colonization era or period, there is an exchange of, of cultures. We, we can note here the Colombian exchange where there is an exchange of culture, traditions, beliefs, and the practices, and also the goods coming from Africa, the Europe, and the modern or the new world or the Americas. Multilateral imperial politics triggered an indigenous arms race and led to the violent transformation of Native America. The Mesoamerican and Incan civilization perished in the conquest. As at the beginning of this conquest, these Mesoamerican and Incan civilization were being washed out or wiped out due to diseases and their the military might of these. Um, European powers and millions of Indians died as a result of forced labor and diseases. Yet cultural exchange did take place. So even there is um, a dark side of this colonial period, there is also the brighter side where there is a, a, a great exchange of cultural amenities. So um, one of the significant exchanges were the colonial food, the breeding of cattle, sheep, goats, pig mules, and many other animals coming from um, Africa and Europe. So there is exchange not only coming from the Latin Americas, but also in Europe and Africa. To the Americas, the Spanish conquerors brought horses, firearms, and the use of wheels. And the first American European settlers introduced the metal fish, hook, the potter's wheel, the plow, new techniques of weaving, and new farming methods. So um, if the Europeans brought technology to these Latin Americas, the Americas provided um, the output or the input or the raw materials used by these European powers. So there is a relationship or economic relationship between these continents. Settlers in Latin America brought the style of architecture, their languages, and their Roman Catholic religion. So these are the significant influences between these um, two regions. As you can see here in the picture is the a basilica or a, a big um, church where being built during this period. So we are now going to tackle about the chapter 4 or the part 4 of this chapter 16, the Dutch, English, and French gained colonies. England, France, and Netherlands, or the Dutch, took a small part in the early voyages of exploration unlike the, uh, the Portuguese and the Spanish explorers. For religious descent and civil wars focused their interests at home. So at the beginning, England, France, and Netherlands, their only focus is on their own lands. But as they can see the progress and the development of these um, countries in the Iberian region, um, they envied 
the the strategy of these Portuguese and Spanish colonizers on how they expand their economy. So they also followed the footsteps of these Portuguese and Spanish, but they modified this. And we can see in the latter part of this discussion, in the Spanish and Portuguese, they used religion, but and might or the military power. However, in the Dutch, English, and French, they used economy, the 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 trade. This is their primary um, strategy to colonize um, more uh, unconquered lands. Their ships had to sail farther to go around either Africa or South America. Both Spain and Portugal had already claimed colonial empires, so we need to note that empires, it is bigger. They have more power into their colonized um, uh, lands. Um, by the time these countries were ready to join in the exploration, as you can see in the picture or in these um, photos, there is the Iberian Union, where in, here in Iberian Peninsula, there is the Portugal and Spain. So in in the Spain, their conquered lands were mostly in, in the parts of mod um in the Latin Americas, including Peru, Mexico, and um some part of the USA at the beginning. And on the part of the Portuguese um exploration or colonization, they conquered um the entire Brazil and some part of Africa. So 4.1 of the part 4 of chapter 16, Northern Europeans seek a new passage to India. So because of the blockade coming from the Ottoman Empire, this trade route forces um, this, this blockade of... of Trade route forces the Dutch and English and other European countries to find new route for them to, to improve their economy and to widen their trade, um, trade growth. The Dutch and English look first for a route northeast of Asia and the Spice Islands. Uh, so the Spice Islands is located or are located in in the archipelagic country of Indonesia. Their seafarers sailed north of Scandinavia and into the Arctic Ocean. However, the Dutch and English next set out across the Atlantic, hoping to find a northwest passage through North America. So one of the um, explorers from this um, new emerging countries, um, colonial countries, is the famous John Cabot. In 1847, King Henry VII sent, an, or I should say 1847, sent an Italian navigator, John Cabot, or Giovanni Cabot westward to America. Cabot reached Newfoundland and explored its coast, or coast. He reported rich fishing grounds but also describes a cold and quiet different from the tropical island found by Columbus. Another is Henry Hudson, a famous English explorer who made voyages in search for a northwest passage. In 1601, sailing for British merchants, Hudson took his ship Half Moon up the Hudson River, giving the Netherlands plain to land along the river. So, um, as we can observe, and their purpose of their voyages or exploration is to find a new route, to find a remedy on how they can um, connect on their spice islands or their trading partners in the other part of the, of the, the world. So one of the settlements being built or established is the New Amsterdam. Dutch settlers established the colony of New Netherlands, including what is now known as New York City or originally called as the New uh, Amsterdam. 
these are the colonies aside from the 13 colonies being this that will be discussed on the succeeding part other dutch holdings in the western hemisphere were some islands in the caribbean so caribbean is a famous destination tropical destination because of the um, beaches and the um, very tropical islands which is very um, very swak in Tagalog to foreign countries. The colony of Dutch Guinea or Guinea um, now Suriname and parts of Brazil. The another, another is that the Netherlands became or becomes a leading center. When the Dutch revolted against the Spanish rulers or these um the new netherlands as they had said or the united netherlands um they revolted to the spanish rulers in 1568 their ships could no longer enter either spanish or portuguese ports so the dutch decided to take over the portuguese trade routes and set up their own trade with india and the east indies so as they revolted to the spanish they were able to to strengthen their naval power to increase their trade goods or resources because as we know neither netherlands is um a, a bit small country compared to other european countries so in 1602 the dutch east india company was formed and soon gained control of nearly all of the portuguese ports in asia the Netherlands also became the only European country allowed to trade with Japan. So this is very um, powerful development during this period because um, imagine they call uh, they took over all most of the colonies or the trading ports of their former al ally or. The, the former Iberian country of Portugal. In the mid-1600s, the Dutch had a near monopoly of the Asian trade. So they took mostly of these um, Asian colonies or trade routes. In 1621, the Dutch West India Company, um, aside from British East India Company and British West India Company, there is also the Dutch West India Company founded in 1621, which controlled much of the slave trade and other shipping in the Atlantic and in the Caribbean. So this is the flag of the Dutch West India Company. We need to note that Dutch West India Company is like a corporation in the modern time times wherein there is a cooperation or um, group of merchants who decided to to form a group of fleets or something like that to to create a, or to start a voyage and find a trading routes and to meet native locals to 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 make trade with them dutch west india company was chartered company of dutch merchants as i had said a while ago in 1621, it was granted a charter for a trade monopoly in the West Indies and given jurisdiction over the African slave trade, Brazil, and the Caribbean. These are the primary goals of these um, companies. One primary goal of the Spaniards and Portuguese was the spread of court Christianity. But the Protestant Dutch sent no missionaries. Their main interest was a successful and profitable trade. So this uh, is now the, the difference between Portuguese and Spanish and the Dutch, English, and the French um, colonizers. They are mostly focusing on profitable trade. In the Americas, the Dutch were an important power for, or for on La Brief. But their control of islands in the East Indies lasted for nearly three centuries. Imagine that. And the third one is the, the forts and flips of the Dutch East India Company protected its monopoly in pepper and spices, which are the um, primary spices that the um, 
European countries and we all needed in their day-to-day lives. Mm, la- spices later, cotton, silk, tea, and coffee made up the bulk of the, the Dutch trade. So these are the supplementary goods that the Dutch trade were being utilized or monopolized. For 4.3 is that another um if in the 4.1 is the french next is the the dutch and now is the england where um were being or were became one of the main challengers or challenger of the race for um colonies england challenges spain on the seas like the Netherlands, England concentrated on developing its trade and sea power. So we can see that um, really England is a naval power to trade in Africa, India, or the Americas. However, the English had to fight both rival traders and pirates from other countries. So in French, the or in Dutch, there is the Dutch West India Company. Here in England, there is the East India Company. So what is this East India Company? East India Company is an English economy formed for the exploitation of trade with East and Southeast Asia and also the India, the famous India incorporated by Royal Charter on December 31, 1600. English privateers sailing with royal approval captured Spanish treasure ships and attack ports in South America. So they they pirated or they blockade or they block the, the entry of Spanish treasure ships in order for them to monopolize the region. So there is a big difference between the naval power of the Spanish and the English um, merchants or traders. The Spanish treasure fleet. So when we say fleet, it is a group of ships um, which aim to go to a specific land and to trade with it or to exert a military military power there are groups these are group of ships supported by the monarchy the spanish treasure fleet is portrayed here at long last departing havana harbor harbor so havana in cuba after numerous delays and loaded with treasure the various fleets met in havana to group together and sail for spain Next, English colonists settled in North America. Not only in the South America were these um, Western colonizers um, colonized, but also they um, exerted their effort to colonize every region or most part of the North America. The territories chosen first English settlements in the Americas were in areas claimed by Spain or Portugal in early 1600. So there is a conflict of interest on who should colonize the region, whether it is um, the Spain, the Portugal, or English. And these English um, really took advantage and they won this um, colonialist um, divisions or division of lands. It is also noted that many people migrated from England to the West Indies, including Bermuda and Virginia settlement founded in Jamestown in 1607. So Jamestown is the first um, English settlement in the North America. The Jamestown colony is the per- first permanent English settlement in America. It was founded on May 14, 1607 on a peninsula of the James River in what is now the state of Virginia. The colony was named after King James I of England. So these um, settlements um, cemented the power of this English um, monarchy or this English country. English ships were exploring the um, coastline of what has come to be the New England. 
the first colony there was found at Plymouth in 1620, followed a few years later by the Massachusetts Bay Colony. So these are the colonies during this um, period of colonization in North America. France began overseas expansion. So other than the English and the Dutch, there also the um the France or the French um monarchy leading the the expansion of their land or their overseas land. France too sought territory in the Americas. In the early 1500s, French fishing boats regularly set sailed to the ocean of Newfoundland, the French king hoped the Northwest Passage would be found there and sent out several expeditions. So the same with the English explorers and the Dutch, they also wanted to find a new trading route. French traders, trappers, and missionaries were the first Europeans to explore large areas of Eastern and Central America. So is Eastern and Central were mostly um, composed of the Caribbean islands. One of the primary explorer or French ex explorer is Jean is Jacques Cartier. In 1534, French King Francis I authorized the navigator Jacques Cresset Cartier to lead a uh, voyage to the new world in order to seek gold and other riches as well as new route to asia Cartier's three expedition along the saint lawrence river would later enable france to lay claim to the lands that would become modern day canada so as we know that there um there is a region in canada where they speak french so historically canada was being colonized by friends until they were being um, given to to England because of the war between France and um, England. Another is Samuel de Chaplain. He is considered the father of New France. He host of what is now Maine and established other settlements at Montreal in Nova Scotia. He explored much of northeastern um, North America in his efforts to build up the fur trade. So other than the goods or the um, primary goods like food, uh, one of the aim of this trade was to establish a fur trade to support New France because fur is one of the primary material to create clothes which is very famous in um, European countries. Another is Louis Juliet. He is also a fire trapper and Jacques Marquet, a priest traveled by boat in the Great Lakes and down the Wisconsin and Mississippi rivers in 1672. Another is, um, I'm sorry for the, if I cannot pronounce well the, the words or the names. Sir de la, de la Salle. Uh, he is a French nobleman who had emigrated to Fran New France to become a fur trader and sailed to lower to the lower Mississippi River in 1682, starting north of the river and traveling down to the Gulf of Mexico. La Salle claimed the entire Mississippi Valley for France and named it Louisiana for King Louis the Fourteenth. So because of this um, exploration and colonization, the North Amer American lands claimed by France over a vast area were sparsely settled. A scattered trading posts around the Great Lakes and in the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. French traders brought or bought um, the valuable furs collected in the wilderness of French and Indian trappers. In the valley of the St. Lawrence River, the king granted large tracts of farmlands to French lords. So they is already starting to, or they started to, to, to form a settlement in these lands during this period. Next is that France finds colonial wealth in Africa and the Caribbean. So not only in the North America, 
but also in Caribbean and some parts of South America and also in Africa where France um, established um, their colonial settlements. Except the trade in furs, France's position in North America yielded little wealth. So these islands acquired in the West Indies were far more profitable. Large sugar plantations worked by slaves imported from Africa through France trading posts in Senegal brought in a new great wealth. So one of the settlements or the read um, island were being colonized is the Hispaniola. Originally, the whole island was called Hispaniola and was one of the first base of operations for Spanish under Columbus. Later, the island would be split into French side in the west and the Spanish side on the east. The French side was called Saint Dom Doming or the modern day Haiti. The eastern side is now known as the Dominican Republic. Sometimes Dominica was used to describe the whole island. Next, Britain destroys colonial empire. So the after the uh, the race for these colonial lands, Britain started to move forward ahead from its um, counterparts. By the mid-1700s, a general conflict among European nations brought Britain and France to competition not only in Europe but also over the colonial territories in North America, India, and the Caribbean. For the North American colonies, the most significant war was the Seven Years' War. This is the, the war which I am talking a while ago. During 1756 until 1763, known as um, in American history as the French and Indian War. In 1757, the British won the first colonial victory over the French in India. Then British naval and land forces in North America captured the fort, guarded the St. Lawrence River. The city of Quebec. The stronghold of New France fell in 1759. Superiority decided the outcome of the war. France island colonies in the Caribbean and its slave trading post in Africa fell to the British. So sad for the French empire that they gave most of their colonies to French because of their loss during the Seven Years' War. So after the Seven Years' War, there were the establishment of the Treaty of Paris. There was the establishment of the Treaty of Paris in 1763. It is a peace treaty signed by Britain, France, and Spain on February 10, 1763. France lost nearly all of its North American colonial possessions but was given back its richer or rich sugar colonies in the Caribbean. The victors... Great Britain became the number one global colonial power after the Seven Years' War. After that, colonies in the Americas. In a short time, the colonies pushed from the trade tidewater strip toward the Appalachians and finally crossed the mountains by the Cumberland Gap and Ohio Re River. So in this um, statement, we can really see and say that Really, the Americas were being dominated during this period by the colonial powers because of their lands were um, being colonized, starting at the tail end of the north until the end of South America. Next, we are now going to chapter or the part five of this chapter or chapter 16. Changes bring revolution in economic life. The voyages and of exploration brought European nations vast new lands and new resources. The resulting changes in income life were so great that the three the years fourteen fifty to seven hundreds are often called the commercial revolution. So aside from industrial agricultural revolutions, there is also um this term the commercial revolution where um European powers really profited because of their colonies. 
because of the wealth of the land they colonized. Important changes occurred in ways of carrying on business and trade, but even greater changes took place in the basic ways that people thought about money and all the economic aspects. So there is a drastic change on how people think about um, money, about trade. Merc- uh, this is the word that I am. I want to share, the mercantilism or the idea of um more economy um specific trade mercantilis strengthened the power of european states the manner centered economy of, of the early middle ages had given way to a town centered economy in the middle ages this in turn gave way to state centered so this is the development of economy in the european states from manner centered to town centered into a state-centered state-centered we can say that they they already expand their trade ac- um, abroad not no longer on their um, domestic regions mercantilism it is the doctrines where it is a doctrine where articulated by a dis- desperate collection of journalists government officials merchants and pamphleters English mercantilists were frequently private businessmen who sought to influence government by public pamphleteering for or or against some parliamentary act or other in which they um, or their company had a vested interest. The basic basic principle of mercantilism were first the, the belief in the static nature of wealth, Next is the need to increase the supply of gold because gold is one of the um, sign of power and wealth during this period and up until now. Next, or the third, is the presentation or communication tools that can be used as demonstrations. Next, the importance of large population, the use of colonies to support wealth, And this is being reflected on how European powers um, expand their economy. Um, They colonize their new found lands. Presentations are communication, the tools that can be used. Next, um, through this mercantilist ideology or mercantilist form of um, economy, arise the mercenaries. In 1600s, ruler's power was judged by the luxury of the royal court and the size of the armed forces. As armies were made up of mostly of hired soldiers called mercenaries. So mercenaries are soldiers who um, assisted the, the colonial traders because they were being paid. These are hired soldiers in order for them to make it more easy to colonize um, lands. Mercantilists, um, aside from mer- mercenaries, there is also the mercantilists. Mercantilists naturally insisted that colonists to buy goods from the home country, not from other lands or even other colonies. They sought colonies that would be profitable for the home country. Royal power therefore depended on a plentiful supply of bouillon. Bouillon is a money to increase the country's supply of bouillon. Rulers or bouillon is a, a bulk of gold. Rulers and encourage exports which brought money into the country. Joint stock companies are formed. So example of these joint stock companies are the West East in West India Company or the Dutch East India Company and the English um, companies, which were being funded by the monarchy. As one of the statements that rulers encouraged the formation of so, such joint stock companies by granting these enterprises certain privileges in return for a fixed share of the company's profits. Queen Elizabeth was a shareholder in the voyage of Francis Drake made around the world in the Golden Hind, his famous um, 
ship in fifth or treasure ship in 1577 until 1580. Really, Queen Elizabeth in this time were uh, really profited on these um, voyages. Two of the most successful joint stock companies, as I had said, is the English East India Company and the Dutch East India Company. So now we are now going to the upheavals in the European economy. In this period, there happened the inflation damages Europe's economy. The Americas had been a new and unexpected source of great wealth for Spain and Portugal. The gold from the Incan treasure and the mines of Brazil, silver from the rich mines of Mexico and Peru, including what is now Bolivia. These um, resources coming from native lands really helped European countries for their economic development. Before long, the French and Dutch also began to prey on Spanish shipping, particularly the ships carrying gold and silver. So there is a scramble of Mm, gold, golds and goods. In 1628, in Admiral Piet Hain of the Dutch West India Company captured the Spanish silver fleet in the Caribbean. The treasure included 4 million gold and silver ducats, which helped the Dutch finance their war against Spanish rule and made Hain a Dutch national hero. So it is, there is a conflict of, of due to their race for money and resources. The profit motive brings changes in agriculture. What is this profit motive? So the demand of more food led some English landlords to change the traditional ways of using farmlands. They took away the common lands from the peasants or raised rent on farmlands so that the poor peasants could no longer afford them. Thousands of peasants had to leave the land from their families and always, and had always farmed. The landlords then hired peasants as laborers at low wages or rented the land to the prosperous yeoman farmers. So this yeoman farmers um, was a man who was a free and not a servant and who owned and worked on his own land. Both the landowners and the yeoman profited from this change in agriculture. So the peasants who had lost their land, however, maybe a whole new group of homeless poor who had to find work. And most of these peasants are natives. So really there is a, a suppression of um, their lands. They really get their their original lands and became peasants. Next, trade lays the foundation of capitalism. Aside from mercantilism, where there, um, in that period, the mercantilism, really the merchants became the driving force. Another is the capitalism. The origin of modern capitalism can be seen first in the busy town life and prosperous trade that developed in the late Middle Ages. So what really is capitalism? Capitalism is the economic system that rests on the private ownership and use investment of capital. During, during the late Middle Ages, new practices in Italy stimulated the development of capitalism in a number of ways. So the, the root word in this is the capital. It includes the money and goods such as land, plantations, ships, and shops that are used to make more money. In relation, the commercial revolution promotes a capitalist economy. The capitalist practices of the Middle Ages became more widespread and well-established during the age of exploration. The mercantile capitalism in the 1600s and 1700s differed from modern capitalism but established the basis for its development because of these following characteristics. First is that there is a private ownership. In a capitalistic system, capital or the money and property belongs to individuals who are free to decide what to do with it. Another is the profit motive. When we say profit motive is that capitalists believe that when enough people want a particular product, they will be producers who will 
or there will be producers who will supply it because they want to make it as a profit. So if there is a demand for this, there is um, a supply that will be produced. So there is a motive or a profit. And in effect, there is a pro profit or the money that you will receive. Next is market economy. So when we say market economy, the money value is placed on all forms of prop property that is just about everything land goods people's time and labor which can be bought and sold also these are all the the economic um happenings during the age of exploration which resulted to the change in the in the new worlds as we can see a changed and changing world the age of exploration and commercial revolution caused great and lasting changes, which we really experience in modern times, considering that we are also being colonized by Western power. For the first time, people could think of the world in global terms. So there is the rise of the concept of globalization. Also, for the first time, people began to look at their lives in economic terms, buying and selling, making a profit. So, the concept of economy grows larger, not only, not no longer um, confined on the idea of domestic system where you need to produce on your own and to use it on your own. So, in this period, there is an enlargement of production, the, the, the growth or the growing um, production of goods. Europe becomes the center of world trade. Um, unlike in the past that Europe is very chaotic, because of this period of exploration, the, this propelled their growth and their development. The supply and money increased, trade expanded, and people invested in large-scale business enterprises. When European capital is invested in Brazilian wood, Bolivian silver mines, or the hides of Argentinian cattle, they change the lives of American Indians in countless ways. In African slaves, traffic had a devastating effect on culture and society. So as you can see in the pictures, here is the contribution or the effect and change in this um, time of in this time where there is a world trade. The center of business shifts to Northern Europe, specifically in Europe is the northern part. The Italian city-states lost their position as Europe's leading commercial centers of the European states and the Atlantic, Atlantic coast. Um, Portugal and Spain were the first to profit from the new trade routes, but the Netherlands and England gradually lead in trade. So at the latter part, um, the Northern Europe dominated world trade, specifically the capital of Amsterdam and London became the centers of commercial life. Knowledge of the earth increases. Because of the exploration and commercial revolution, it produced a flooded or flood of new information about geography, animal life, plants, and minerals because of the exchange of culture and the uh, movement of these explorers. Because not only explorers who explore, but also the geographers and many botanists and zoologists. New knowledge of the world and its resources inspired a revolution of science so during this period there is the enlightenment new kinds of foods also grow or grew europe brought ever-changing quantities of colonial goods from the americans and the rest of the world which received important vegetables the asian orange and banana flourished in the americas so did the sheep chickens pigs horses and cattle bring to the American by European settlers. So there is the exchange of goods. Ships, shifts occur in the world population. The increase in the white population, so here arise the um, white supremacy. Or because of this supremacy, um, black Africans, native Indians, and Asians were being suppressed, leading to them being colonized by this white population and they, because of this colonization, this white population grew exponentially. 
white population was greater than that in the ad any, any other group. This was true in part because disease and other hardships decimated other population. Although plagues struck the port of cities, port cities of Europe, the European population kept growing because of an improved food supply. So they have more resistant or um, stronger immune system. Shifts occur in world's population also. The new nations with multicultural societies begin to emerge. So there is the concept of multiculturalism where there is exchange of ideas and really culture. So because of that, we also learn different cultures, traditions, the exchanges of ideas. So that is the encapsulation of this um, chapter. I hope you learned something and more learnings to come. I am Kenneth G. Aiken. I hope you will learn from this and share to others. And if you have other ideas, please don't hesitate to share and give feedbacks on this um, topic that I was um, discussed or that I discussed. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Happy learning.